Hey, what's up? You working uh, hard with the promotions? Yeah, it's uh, we're now in Slovakia. We got here earlier today, and we're working. It's of course long, long nights of driving, and then you arrive in the new city, and then you play, and you know. But it's still kind of fun. I don't know. It's still kind of fun. How how far are you guys going to be going on this tour? Uh, I think the the first place from here might be like China or something. Now I don't remember exactly the schedule, but I think we had like one gig in in Beijing or something. Um, so that's pretty far. <laughs> I don't know. That I pay Beijing uh, a few shows in, in Japan. Was it like maybe seven shows? All this is together with Halloween, then. Like, we are doing this, like, double tour with these guys. So, yeah, that's it. That's the deal at the moment. Like, Would you say it takes a lot of energy to do all these tours? I think it does. I think this, um, this travel, it, it, it eats a lot of your life energy somehow. Like, but of course, I mean, no, I actually don't drink so heavily anymore, but uh, I remember in the days when I did drink, of course, this doesn't help either, because there's always this, like, sort of this cultural thing around this touring, too, where everybody, there's, like, booze everywhere and everybody's drinking, you know, like, it's somehow just par for the course somehow that there's drinking. So, of course, that doesn't help either, but um, for me, it's like I'm really trying to cut down on the booze because I can't handle the hangovers anymore. I'm just, like, with horrible hangovers. <laughs> I'm really trying to take it easy with that stuff, but the, I mean, just this traveling, you know, doing this 600 kilometers overnight on very bumpy roads, you don't get to sleep so good, and then people get sick, and you know, it's like, no shower sometimes, you know, sometimes the venues are very cold, like we were in Bulgaria, and then uh, you play some old sports hall, like basket hall or something like that, and, and of course they don't have any heating in the dressing rooms, and then you have to spend all day in the dressing room uh, doing stuff. And of course, it's like, bleh, but, I don't know. It's still fun, though. I mean, playing is still fun. It's just a travel that's like a teleport device where you just push a button and you're in, in the next city. That would be perfect. Uh, that's something you, oh, sh you should invent. No such thing. <laughs> <laughs> we should invent that. Then it'll be easy to travel. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, that would be very good. T touring now compared to the Ingve Malmsteen days, has it changed much, would you say? Actually, surprisingly, very many things are the same. Um, it's still so much cheaper to travel by bus than by plane. That, and it's also very, very convenient because you can you can drive exactly to the venue and then the the crew can set up the stuff. At least on this level, I think if you go like one or two levels above what we are doing, then perhaps it makes sense to take planes. But I've done that too, and. The problem if you do a tour with planes is that then you have to, you still have to drive from the hotel, which is usually in the center of the city, to the airport, which is usually not in the center, and then you have to do all this check-in, and so it's like, actually, being on the bus is actually somewhat convenient, like, I don't know, and it's the same, it's the same as on the English days, I mean, you have a diesel-driven truck, a diesel-driven bus, and then you have a bunch of roadies and band people on this little submarine, you know, going around. Yeah. It's the same. Like, not so many things have changed. And you're promoting right now Elysium, the new Stradivarius album. Would you say um, the songwriting process took long to do or not? No. Actually, that's the thing. We got off the last world tour in February. I think it was late February of 2000. 10 and since we now have a record deal I mean when we made Polaris we didn't have a record deal so it was like a little bit uncertain but for now now, now we have a deal you know with the label so of course we thought eh, let's make another le record at some point so we all got together in April uh, saying you know let's let's see what we have you know what, what material we have and then already then we had between all the people who write in the band which is like now four people we had something like was it eighteen or twenty songs, so it was no no problem having material. I think the problem was that we maybe had too much material and deciding what to cut. You know that's the thing. But 
I would say then in April, if I would have known how little time we would have had, I would have worked harder back then. But the problem was in April that at least I thought that, ah, oh, man, we have now 10 months to finish this. Let's write some more songs and, you know, let's work on the songs that we have and stuff. So we were actually doing demos first. We actually made two sets of demos, like one very rough demo when we rehearsed in April, and then we made another one in May. Just, you know, developed the songs a little bit. Uh, and I, I thought for sure that we would have until this year, you know, maybe we would finish the album in, you know, around now or something like that, like maybe even a month later, let's say March 2011 or something like that. I, I figured we'd have all the time in the world. But then in the summer, we were approached by these Halloween guys who said, like, we have this interesting proposition that we do this world tour together. Uh, what do you say? And of course, the first answer was like, eek! What the fuck are we gonna do now? We really have to step on it to make this album ready uh, in time for that tour if it's gonna happen. But then we decided to do the tour, uh, and even we started this tour without the product being out. It came out uh, when was it now? Fifteenth of January or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the tour started end of November, so we didn't quite finish in time. But uh, we really stepped up the pace uh, so we made basically the album between April and October which is quite fast you know also then consider that we, there was like a bunch of songs that we didn't finish like we, didn't, we didn't have time uh, so I think it, it, went, it went pretty okay and of course you're, if, if, for me I'm always like super worried you know before you release something you don't know what people will think uh, you don't really know I mean you just have to make the stuff and then see what how it's received but so far, everybody seems to like it, and the people at the label like it, and you know, like, you know, most of the people who who have heard it now actually like it. So I'm happy. You know. And what are you guys going to do with the unfinished songs that you have uh, in the backlog? <laughs> Probably nothing. So they'll just stay uh, there. I think we, stay we had there. also a bunch of unfinished songs from 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 Polaris, and we didn't do anything with those either. But I think it's like each person is resp responsible for his song, and I think. Maybe they get recycled, you know, in some other shape, or maybe we finish them some other time. I don't know. Like, it's like, like I said, uh, we had so little time in the end. Well, we decided to do this Halloween, and we decided that the deadline would be November one for all the components. It was like super stress, and and I think if you re read this like liner notes on the on the album, there was like even two people mixing it at the same time. I mean, we had like two or three separate production tracks. I was like doing keyboards and then was one guy mixing it and then the other guy mixing it, you know, on the same day. Like, so we really had to hurry up in the end because we didn't, we didn't know when, at the outset, we didn't know that we would have this deadline because we made this pact with Halloween. But, you know, this is like normal, normal stuff. You know, it's, ne if it, it's never really easy. Not the most difficult album I've done, you know, and I, uh, I think... I also had it sort of easy. I think Matthias is the guy who took the most weight on his shoulders and he didn't snap. And I think, you know, what doesn't kill him makes him stronger. So I think it's like, for him, it's a good, good. It, it's been a good experience. I mean, he's, he's very experienced when it comes to production, but maybe not with this like sort of, this sort of music, you know, I don't know. So I hope he's happy, but I don't know. He seems happy. It's a good product, at least, so we can uh, not complain on that. Yeah, I, well, some people probably would complain, but you know, you can't please everybody. But I've I've heard so many positive things about the record that I'm not, now I'm not worried anymore that that oh, did we fail? You know, somehow <laughs> yeah. I stopped worrying about that now. But when when we, when we had finished it, I was worried. But then again, I'm always worried, and I always think we never have enough time. So it's like professional disease in my case. Another thing too, some people might not realize is that you uh, played with Ronnie James Dio, you know, on Lock Up the Wolves album. What's your memories of uh, recording with Dio? It was it was very nice actually. It was uh, I had I was only in his band for a year, about, but it was like a very nice year in my life uh, because I came from this Memstein band, which 
I thought was like also really a lot of fun. I mean, I had a, had a blast doing all those stuff with Ingrid, but it was more chaotic style of doing business, you know. Let's put it that way. Like there was like a lot of <laughs> stuff going on. Uh, it's like you never you never really knew where you'd be in the, from one day to the next. If you'd be evicted or if you'd be in jail or if you'd be having different record label and management and stuff, because there was so much turbulence all the time. Hmm. Certainly, you wouldn't know which singer would be. Would it be the same singer on the tour that was on the record? You know, because he might fire the singer, or the singer might quit, or you know, it was like always this turbulent stuff. And the money situation was a fucking disaster <laughs> with Ingrid. But I mean, I, I I really like the guy in a way. Like, and I think he's a wonderful player still. Uh, but at that point in his life, he he really didn't have it together, like on many other professional levels. Let's, let's put it that way. Like, neither did I. But I think it was like a bad mix. You know, in, in some ways. But anyway, I, ca- I came from that chaos to to Ronnie and Wendy's organization, which was, you know, of course, completely different. It was like super professional, super friendly. Nobody was like raising their voice. Nobody was drinking like fish. Everything was just like, you know, all of a sudden I was the worst asshole in the room, which was like a different feeling from in English band because where there were so many so many assholes around, like including myself. But. Uh, so from that perspective, it was like, you know, almost finding sanctuary because Ronnie was such a nice person and Wendy was so good, great and everything was like, just everything just worked and everybody was friendly and, you know, I don't know. Like I wrote somewhere else, it was, I felt like a puppy coming in from the cold rain, you know, into the warmth. Like, so it was a it was a very good year for me. But uh, then unfortunately, Ronnie, uh, Wendy talked him into do this Black Sabbath reunion again. And then he he had to put this Dio band on ice, and I think it was on ice for like five six years. And by the time he put it off ice again, he actually asked me if I wanted to join again. But by that time I was like knee deep in the Stradivarius thing, and I felt so so home also in Stradivarius at the time. It felt like you know we were. I didn't really know if we were going places, but at least we felt like everybody was on the same page. So at that point. I just stayed in Stradivarius and didn't rejoin Dio, like, which I think was probably the correct decision. Like, I, I, I think it's a great decision because Stradivarius is still going strong. Yeah, of course, on that level too. But I think, we, yeah, I mean, for, for a lot of reasons. But of course, I, I hated to disappoint Ronnie too. It was like, I, it really felt a bit tough at the time. But of course, I, I would want to give him 100% of my time and stuff too and I knew that I couldn't do that at, at that point because I was like somehow really you know knee deep in this strato thing but where we're going places or not I don't know but we it, it felt like we had this like band of brothers type of feeling at that point anyway it might have been like 96 or something like that 95, 96 97 when they asked again like so uh, but I, I I would bump into Ronnie over the years. No, then it was always great. You know, it's a great guy. It's very sad what happened. But. Ronnie Dio is a very powerful man, and everybody uh, has nothing bad to say about the guy. He's a true hero in the rock yeah, industry. Yeah, I guess everybody except Vivian Campbell. <laughs> He's like super super hostile still. So there must have been something really really uh, strange in their past that happened because I think you now even that Ronnie is dead he was like still maybe was still like oh man what a fucking jerk you know? I don't know. but that's neither here nor there nothing to do with me like I, I have nothing bad to say about him at all so I actually not about Vivian either I don't even know Vivian I don't know what happened between them like it's like way way before my time so I don't know probably some business thing isn't it always Business always ruins the relationships. Yeah, it happens. You know, root of all evil, all necessary evil. Recall any uh, interesting moments at uh, Ingve Malmsteen's, um, you know, recording sessions or rehearsals before tours. Uh, interesting things. There was always interesting things. I mean, there was like 
like I said, it was like living in the middle of a, of a fucking tornado. Like, we were all completely crazy. I mean, we were all alcoholics. We were all lunatics. I mean, it's like a bit of a problem when your boss is like worse than you are and doesn't keep you in line. I mean, he was like the ringleader of, of this tornado of lunatics, like, in a way. Uh, so there was always stuff happening, I don't know. D did you ever watch again, you know, like the j live in Japan, the 1985 footage and that, and, you know, see how good this uh, quality is? Or you, you must be very proud of that? Yeah, I haven't watched that stuff for years, actually, but I think there was like one, there was two live Japan things, wasn't there? Like one from Budokan and one from like 85 or something. Yes. I don't remember now, but... I guess, well, you, you, we were young and probably some, in some sense inexperienced as well. And, of course, you know, like, I think especially this live record being made in this uh, chaos was probably not always, like, super high-end production and stuff. But, uh, I mean, we also made, what the fuck, how many studio records I've made in those years? It's like, one, two, three, four. I think I was on four length studio albums it was like between 84 and, and 88 and that we made I mean fuck four four records in four years and then and at the same time sometimes doing like 300 gigs in a year you know like mm. it's, it was fucking lunacy like, I don't know how we got it done really but somehow we did and I, I think some of the stuff is actually quite good so, yeah. I don't know it is still powerful today when you watch the videos on YouTube or the DVDs, you know, uh, the gr it was great work at that time and it still is, stands the test of time. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, I mean, I tend to notice, I think I guess being self-critical you tend to notice uh, flaws or mistakes or whatnot, but, you know, I'm also, of course I realize that if it brings happiness to people I'm, I'm all for it, you know, in a way. Like, um... What DVDs were there? Was there one or two from Japan? I don't even remember anymore. But well, there's there was only one. There's Robert only Robert. one. The live in Japan, 1985. And then there's this Russian thing, which I didn't like so much. And the video quality is probably better from, from Russia, but I still didn't like it so much. It was like, it's like so many overdubs, too. You can tell sometimes it was overdubs, and it was like sometimes out of sync, and you know, I don't know. But whatever. I don't know see the flaws but you know I because it's a it's part of your creation and of course you always see flaws but you know people in the outside world will never see those flaws yeah exactly so maybe I shouldn't even talk about it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know maybe I'm being stupid but it makes total sense well you've been a real pleasure to talk to today hope the tour goes awesome throughout this year I think so. I think it will. I need a cup of coffee and then we we go play. It's like good. This being with Halloween is such a nice. Uh, you know, we are. It's not like really super opener, but we are. You know, very special guest. I guess is the title that we have on this tour. So we play one, one hour, and then Halloween, play after us. And. Of course, it's quite nice having this like very short work day anyway but it's also boring boring you out of your skull a bit like just like and 23 hours to fill with other things and you can only watch like this uh, Conan the Barbarian only like two or three times before you get sick of it you know? <laughs> <laughs> we watched it again last night I think that's like the second time in my life I've seen that movie like somebody had a DVD like and I don't know it's like those Maybe you sleep like seven or eight hours on bumpy roads, you sleep very badly, and then there's still uh, about 15 hours of time to fill. But of course, now I'm doing interviews, so now I'm feeling, I'm feeling some time. <laughs> so now, it's is, nice, like. now you're getting something productive done with your day. Exactly, that's true, in a way. Yeah. That's very true. We are, we are trying to do stuff sometimes. I, I think Lowry... This is quite interesting. He's working on a movie score, and that's like, I wouldn't want to wish this on my worst enemy to try on this like bumpy bus to get this like string arrangements 
it's like for a full orchestra. Hmm. Uh, like the Bratislava Symphonia or something like that. Like he has to get the score together. I think in a week. You know, like so he's sitting there with this notation program and trying to, to score this movie like on this bumpy bus. That's something. That's like dedication that I don't think I have. But, but anyway, it's fun. I mean, we 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 kill time in our own ways. You know, everybody. Like like I said, I watched Conan the Barbarian, and then last night I fell asleep somewhere, and I bounced around in my bunk for like 40 minutes, and then I think I passed out. It's like really, really bad roads. What you have to do is get Conan the Destroyer next, the other movie. Yeah, exactly. But that's not that's not, that doesn't have uh, Schwarzenegger in it. Yes, it is. Aha! Uh-huh. You've never seen Conan well, the Destroyer. Uh huh. Well, you have to get that. But we are in we are in somewhere in, in Slovakia, and I think probably all the DVD shops are closed. So I don't know. Maybe somebody has. You'll have a mission to do for tomorrow. Find Conan the Destroyer. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You have a great day. Look forward to seeing how your uh, schedules are going in the future. Hopefully we talk again. Yeah, let's see. Exactly. Let's see what happens. All right, well, you have a great evening. Okay, you too. All right, good night. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.